Where did the Walsh family come from? Um, well, see, there's five siblings in the Walsh family, and coincidentally enough, there are five siblings in the family I came from. Now, it's not all girls in my family, it's, it's two boys and three girls, but still, that whole dynamic of a kind of a rowdy Irish family with, you know, a kind of a, a, a devout matriarch mammy and a, and a, a kind of an overworked father um, living in sub suburbia in Dublin it was all very familiar to me, you know. Um, so I'm not saying the Walshers are my family because I'm really not. Oh God, I'm not. Um, but the dynamics of that size of a family um, was something that was very familiar to me. Was it always my plan to write about all five sisters? Not at all. I mean, Jesus, I was just thrilled to get one book out of them. Um, I mean, I'm sorry now I didn't put 11 sisters in um, because I've just enjoyed writing their story so much. But no, like, it was just one of those happy accidents. Um, like, really, when I wrote Watermelon, I really was really worried um, and quite convinced that, uh, that I only had one book in me. Um, so there was no master plan at all. Mammy Walsh is every mammy. Well, every Irish mammy, anyway. Um, there's just a whole generation of them that, um, that are just like her. Um, and they're sort of a combination of, you know, very devout and, and very conservative. And at the same time, uh, because they weren't allowed to have much fun, um, you know, in Ireland in the 50s and 60s, there's a part of them that's, I think, wild, almost feral, only dying to have a laugh. Um, so I think Mammy Walsh is emblematic of, of like everybody, everybody in Ireland seems to have a, mani, a mammy like Mammy Walsh and full of wise sayings like, put on that gansey and uh, oh, here comes the rain now and who's after taking my good scissors? And you know, and everybody relates, you know. And apparently actually, um, Jewish mammies are very similar. People who have Jewish mammies say, God, my mammy is just like the Irish mammy. Um, so it's obviously uh, a phenomenon that extends further than Ireland. Um, studies should be done, that's what I say. I'm absolutely certain Mammy Walsh has her own story to tell. Um, in fact, in the little uh, guide to the Walshes, the A to Z of the Walshes, you do get some clues about, you know, the life she almost had. Um, you know, she didn't get much of a chance to have a career. Um, and, you know, she was brought up in a family where like she wasn't the bright one and she wasn't the beautiful one and she was far too tall and her mother never kind of wasted any time letting her know about that. Um, and she learned to bury those, those wounds. Um, so absolutely I feel that she has tons, tons more to tell than she's been allowed to tell so far. Daddy Walsh now has learnt the hard way that it's just best to to keep his head down and say nothing. Um, Daddy Walsh, if he could be summed up in one uh, object, it would be a golf ball. Um, a, the golf is where he finds his um, his peaceful place, his happy place. Um, it, it was very hard for him, like growing up in a house full of, of six women, like six strong, rowdy, noisy women, and even the cat was a girl. So um, yes, he, he, he just, he goes along with things because it's simply safer that way. God love him. Is it easier to write about, do you know, to come back to the Walshes or to do a, start, a standalone? You know, in many ways, it's, it's easier to come back to the Walshes because, you know, I already have the characters in place. But in another way, that's kind of tricky because there's a lot that I can't change. At least if I start a standalone novel, I've complete freedom. Anybody can come in. But with the Walshes, there are five sisters and and they are who they are. And at this stage, they've all been pretty well explored. So it does put some kind of parameters. But then it's lovely. It's just such a pleasure to come back to them. Like, yeah, you know, I have such a la I like I had such a lovely time writing The Mystery of Mercy Close, uh, because not just because of Helen, but because of the other people that are in it. I haven't really thought about writing about another Irish family because I couldn't imagine that the dynamics would be that different. Um, I'd rather stay with the Walshes. Um, I mean, I don't believe in sequels, so I don't know what I'm going to do now, but 
no plans as yet. I mean, I have done other Irish families in other books, like um, um, in This Charming Man, um, Grace and Marnie, and, and their parents, the commies, were, um, were great fun as well. Um, so I have done different ones, but uh, I, do, I do like the Walshes. Do I recognise myself in any of the Walshes? I do. Um, I suppose the one I would be... Well, I, I'm not very like Helen. Helen is probably the one I'm most different from because she's just... She's got a core of steel and she's really, really, really afraid of very little, whereas I'm afraid of almost everything. Um, and I'm not like Margaret really either. Um, She's just so kind of solid um, and sensible and, I mean, not as much as you'd think. Um, but I identify with Rachel, obviously, um, and with Anna um, and, and with Claire. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so bits of myself have gone into all of them, really. It was great fun writing about Helen. It was just so nice to write about somebody who just, who just doesn't care, who is um, fearless and can't be bullied and doesn't take nonsense from people. It was just very enjoyable to kind of live out that part of myself. Um, I really enjoyed writing about Anna as well, especially because of all the free makeup that she gets. That was very, very, very pleasurable to write about and to research, let me tell you. Um, so they'd be my two favourites, I suppose. Has there ever been a peripheral character in the Walshes that I would have liked to develop more? Well, you know, there's new characters coming all the time. I mean, Claire's daughter, Kate, is 17 now. Um, and she's a really strong character already. Um, so, like, maybe she'll have a story to tell one day. And then I th sometimes think of Margaret's friend Emily, who's the scriptwriter in L.A. I um, think she'd have plenty to tell. I liked her a lot and uh, I was interested in her life. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to the next generation now to tell me their stories, though.